Today, we want to talk about the key issues, the challenges, as they are calling them now. So these are the issues um, the society and the landscape industry are facing. This is related to the environment, to the big cities, and to making our life better. Sure, a really important issue in the city environment is the landscape lighting and lighting in cities in general. And that's exactly the topic we are focusing on today. Now I'm inviting to the stage Larissa Kanunikova, an architect and deputy chair of the Committee on Landscaping in St. Petersburg. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the city of St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg today has a big um, lighting campaign. It started in the 1990. So these are the first attempts of comprehensive uh, landscaping. It all started in the 1990s when we had a lot of uh, renovation effort in the central part of the city. And now I'd like to share with you the experience uh, and there, the city planners and builders, landscape architects and uh, designers and sociologists and psychologists all contributed to. We started this almost 25 years ago, and this is a lot of effort. And if you remember the time when we started, this was uh, a patchy city. We had the chaos in the light and uh, color design, and uh, this was a big challenge for us. Today, I'll highlight a number of things, uh, the city building, linear issues and dominance. So if we talk about uh, landscape uh, scenarios in the lighting design context, this is a, most, a really important thing for the big cities. So St. Petersburg is the northernmost big city and um, now it has a lot of environmental issues and lighting environment and color environment issues and all that means that a comprehensive approach today is important not only for landscaping in general but also for building the image of the city. The experience we have in St. Petersburg, primarily this is building the new C facade for the city. So we can see the new territories and uh, here you can see that uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, new land here, and it is, uh, we are getting it. Uh, we have the new passenger port, and uh, we have a uh, new dominant here. Uh, the Christoph uh, Island uh, is also being renovated. A new stadium is being built, and the whole bank embankment will be uh, renovated. And here you can see the major access uh, in the master plan. And uh, now they are all subject to big time renovation. Here are the elements popping up today in building this facade. So we want to bring in order the embankment, and this is done. Here you can see the southern highway. Here we don't have any restaurants at all, and this has become a big public space with different functional areas. Here you can see the second stage. This was uh, done last year. Here you can see the dominance. This is the Lachta Center. And this is the day symbol of this uh, area. And uh, building, doing the hard and soft landscaping and providing the new functions here generates um, a different perception of the embankment. And here we give to the big water. And this uh, brings here also new things. Uh, so here you can see the so called high-speed uh, diameter, which came here, and this is a highway taking some load of the center of the city, I mean the transportation load. And there are some new functional areas, playground for children, so the girls play with the um, balls and uh, the kids can have rest uh, and use different functions here. And now uh, the same territories uh, at night. A few things here. 
we engaged with a psychologist and they said that for the North, an important issue is the perception of the different spectrum of light. It was really difficult to get rid of the red, uh, violet um, colors because uh, the abundance uh, of um, advertising in St. Petersburg was a big issue. And now the things uh, which were subject to renovation are now primarily um, covered with the uh, worm spectrum. This is really important. The psychological comfort generated and Peter Fink talked about psychology a lot. This is uh, really great. I want to confirm this uh, 100%. Without this, a psychological comfort is not possible, irrespective of the great result of the um, uh, street furniture and some uh, trends and features. So this psychological comfort uh, for people to enjoy the environment we are creating at daytime and at night, so this is really important. The number one thing is the city planning and building. Everything uh, starts with the master plan of the city. And when the new functions uh, are added there, here you can see the laughter center, here you can see the renovation stage started of the Kristoffs Island and uh, our um, northern highway. This is really important, especially at night. So at daytime, uh, this is just uh, some silver graphics at the background uh, of the Finnish Bay. But what is really important is that, that Peter the Great determined the perspective and the color solutions he built the city and uh, this is full of harmony we haven't uh, had some bright colors of facades or some built blocks uh, which would uh, be bright for St. Petersburg. so St. Petersburg has always been harmony full of harmony in terms of uh, color perception at night at daytime and it's not only the light but also the color so this is really important we are in the north just again. And this is a set of new sites, the new passenger port in the same embankment. And uh, the elements coming here, so as you can see, there are no bright colors. But now, though, some dominance are coming, some elements, say, the Zenit Arena. Well, it is, uh, when it is in blue, this means that Zenit is playing because. Uh, Zenit is about progressive space. So, say we have in green uh, this uh, center, there are many disputes about it, uh, a lot of arguments. So, our citizens are, are really active, and uh, so it's not after center, it's locked center. They say, please don't spoil our dominant sites. So, they're quite conservative. Well, time will show who's right. Many um, cities destroy the historic facades and remove uh, the um, initial master plan ideas and they destroy the uh, focal points. But St. Petersburg is uh, sticking with its traditions and um, I believe we are going to continue this way. Now we have a new master plan designed and the initial solutions, uh, especially in the central part of the city, the color solutions, that's what I dealt with many years. They're all preserved, and here is the harmony of the late Nisad, of the summer garden. All this shows that today the combination, so not only the light, but also the color, this is really important, the harmony of the color and the water, so it's uh, silver. Well, we have uh, you know, this uh, overcast uh, sky all the time. Moscow is more lucky, and Italy far more lucky, and uh, for us, uh, you know, all our bridges and the winter palace, they are in this harmony of colors. We have spent a lot of time and effort to pick, and we have dealt with the historical archives to take the decisions, and this is crucial. So the color, the graphic design, this is important as perceived, uh, but also it is important uh, to maintain the design of the elements seen at night. You know, when uh, the bridges are raised, uh, many tourists and citizens come to watch it, and this is very typical of St. Petersburg. In other cities, they have other symbols of space, and we have our all traditional elements of these spaces. And when designing our city building solutions, 
we still individually address uh, every element we have in the linear size. So this is a, a lot of effort. We have talked a lot about the things to highlight and maybe fading or dimming. And it is important uh, to look at the line object uh, per se. And also, which is important uh, to us, we have a lack of light. We want uh, the reflection in the water. This is also considered uh, jointly, so the sight and the reflection. Pink, I uh, really adore you. So uh, here you can see the blue bridges. You can see this is, and this means that Zenit is playing. So there are some symbols of modern design coming to the city. At the same time, if you look at the overall nature, so of this harmony in the city, so it is really important to preserve. A few words about the reflection, the light or warm light, and the things which have been introduced, uh, like advertising panels. Uh, well, 20 years ago, we had a lot of advertising on the ground, first and second floors. And now, as you can see, you know, we talked about the Government and Architect Alliance. In St. Petersburg, we have this dialogue established. We have the fourth governor I have dealt with, and uh, this is a complete understanding. And today, all the amendments are free of advertising. The Nevsky Prospect has no advertising. So we have Order 961 and 40 saying that there cannot be any advertisements uh, higher than the ground floor on the facades. We removed everything from the roofs. Uh, VTB was fighting with us. But when you go to St. Petersburg, when you exit the Moscow uh, railway station, you'll see the Oktyabrska Hotel without the VTB sign there anymore. But things like uh, the Hero City Leningrad, these things are there. They're important historically. So they're typical of um, St. Petersburg. So other cities uh, differ in terms of psychology and uh, the building approaches. But let me talk about our approach and the things um, we are going to pursue in uh, different uh, campaigns. And one of the big campaigns I'm building now is the regional project within the federal project called the Comfortable City Environment. And one of the important parts of this is uh, reconstruction and renovation of all the embankments. And uh, one of the spaces is uh, our new embankment uh, along the Karpovka River, and there is a new approach here. We engage uh, with the people in a different way. We had a lot of sessions where they participated. I'd like to say that uh, the dialogue we are enjoying now is a milestone, not only for the site, but also for, say, the pharmacist's uh, garden. We re are renovating it now. And also, you can see the bench, uh, which is uh, a fish shape. And here we also have um, the lanterns, uh, which are variable, and uh, they are fine with daytime and nighttime. And if you look at this at daytime and nighttime, you can see that even the bicycle tracks uh, are designed with, with consideration of color and lights. And uh, you can see that the day colors are also highlighted at night. And one more important thing is perception. So every uh, seventh person in our uh, city is in a way disabled. So be it a child or a wheelchair person. So their perception is also really important for this environment. So we should remember that we have areas, say, for the youth. So this is a kissing area. This is built on purpose. And we have quite a lot of uh, youth here. And uh, we also have a multi-layer color. This is really crucial because uh, this is not a spot, not a designer lighting solution. This is uh, based on psychological comfort for different social age groups and for those uh, who can be uh, more vulnerable, like disabled people and uh, reduced mobility people. A few words about the city center. 
we had some challenges here. Why so? The lanterns uh, coming back from the Soviet uh, times, so we know that uh, this they are made of ferro concrete and of um, tinted steel. But uh, now we decided to uh, use uh, some archives. Some archives are unique, are 300 years uh, old sometimes. We have a committee for protecting monuments. And we looked at the archives to see the lanterns which used to be there. And we have a new campaign with Gazprom on renovation, not only in the center, but also in renovation and landscaping. We have a big program on renovation of facades. Finally, we've been provided with the budget. We are the only city in Russia uh, which doesn't uh, get any subsidies. So we have only our own city budget uh, to spend. And, you know, even the Leningrad region, the St. Petersburg region, receives this funding. So we are not very rich, but we are proud. And uh, we still want to make it uh, in the St. Petersburg traditions. We want to make this uh, signature elements uh, good. And uh, when we wanted some funds, uh, we were told, you are good the way you are. You can live without it. Yeah. Yeah, but this story never ends. You know, the new government will see us coming big time. Yeah, the government and the city design, all the things are considered. You know, uh, not all the um, officials are that bad. One more thing. How much effort was invested into um, reconstructing, reconstructing the innovative dominance uh, in the city? Okay, we deal with the new neighborhoods, but uh, the major issue with the city center is tourists. You know that last year, St. Petersburg was uh, number one in Russia as a number of tourists. So more tourists in St. Petersburg than in Moscow. And now this uh, you know, load comes uh, at day and at night. And you know, this image is really important, and the new functions as well. Here you can see some elements. So we have a new pedestrian area. By the way, uh, when we had Yakovlev as the governor, we wanted transverse uh, streets uh, in the Nevsky Prospect uh, to make them pedestrian. This is really important for the Nevsky uh, Prospect. We don't have any free space there for uh, any public spaces. And it was finally done. It was done for the Hermitage Museum. Uh, this is an open skies uh, exhibition. Hopefully you recognize it. So we go there to the palace square, the uh, general staff arc. So all these circles, they're not just circles. Uh, they show different uh, paving types uh, which existed in St. Petersburg different times. This includes the wood and uh, steel and stone. And this is a fountain, by the way. And this fountain is a symbol showing that times change, but uh, time is eternal. And we also want to build here an, element, an important element. Uh, we had a contest, uh, we had a lot of uh, contemporary projects, and uh, here we also have uh, those who participated. And we still insisted on maintaining the general staff's arc. Uh, so this means that it shouldn't be embellished, it shouldn't be multiplied or replicated uh, by other elements. And uh, so this is a new thing, and today uh, this is a kind of theatric performance we have recently had. We have many people performing there uh, in this environment. And now a few words about the architecture dominance. Okay, this is a functional thing, a TV tower. At daytime it is not uh, so much seen, but at night this is further from the city center. I live close by. One thing to mention, when we the light moves, and this is dynamics, and this is uh, monochrome and uh, bright uh, lighting, well, this environment is kind of grouping around this um, tower. And this is kind of a tradition. We can see our rostral columns. They also have some um, lights on at night. They have a sound to them. So if you look at our panoramic pictures, you know, you cannot even imagine how much effort was introduced into convincing the investors, the owners of the buildings, uh, into uh, doing this. So it was easier with the Lensvet, but we also dealt with Mestostroy, with Mostotrest. So one thing to mention, 
is that this is a lot of effort. Uh, but for the government of the city, which supported us, and which heard the architects, designers, and the psychologists and uh, sociologists, well, if they hadn't heard us, uh, then this uh, wouldn't have happened. Our arch architecture dominance. We changed the Isake of uh, Cathedral uh, lighting uh, a few times. And uh, we have another passenger port here. We have uh, many areas which are not lighted yet. We have invited an Italian designer uh, so that he establishes uh, lighting of the dominant uh, in such a way that you cannot see the fittings. We don't have this uh, spotlight. It has uh, been removed. I really liked uh, the first speech uh, today. Uh, that's yours when you rightly said that uh, the light you cannot see, but which gives you the special feeling and shows a different perspective, is a good approach. We do support it, and that's the way we follow. Please to mention this. A few things to mention on the specific elements. So this is the gas uh, light 200 years ago. and it, So it was powered by gas and uh, here you can see the way we interpreted it, and uh, so that's where they were put, uh, close to the Kazan Cathedral. And now you can see that they are really uh, uh, in place, they do belong there. Okay, today we are talking about uh, local lighting, about um, graphics design, and uh, we talk about some trendy trends and fashionable things, but I don't think that St. Petersburg is a city where we should, uh, you know, be crazy with experiments. We have some sites, uh, we have had uh, failures and other things, but uh, for instance, uh, we got rid of uh, red uh, and the blue and uh, violet uh, decorating this for the city for celebrations. So you can see the Nevsky prospect. There. So we have the warm colors and um, the facade. Uh, signs are also in this typical uh, color solutions. We have festivals. Uh, here you can see the uh, Palace Square or Dvorcova Square, uh, which is bad for architecture, but this is uh, good for the uh, kind of uh, environment, atmosphere of the fest. So we have uh, festivals, uh, but this is only done for a brief period of time. And this means that uh, we still do. We have beauty and uh, we, ha we have the crimson sails, so we have uh, the red uh, color, but it is there only for one occasion. You can see the harmony of this uh, sail ship and the Petra and Pavel tower. You know, if you haven't seen the crimson sails, if you haven't seen the harmony of the architecture, which is our legacy. So I believe we should show respect to the um, legacy architecture. And uh, so if you can do things better, then you uh, can tamper with it. So please uh, come to the Crimson Sales uh, this year. And after uh, this happens following our landscape forum and the light and discussions uh, in the central part of the city, that's what we are going to discuss. We have people from the Union of Architects here. Uh, they are co-organizers of this forum. And uh, this historic legacy is newly understood and functionally uh, renovated, uh, respecting the traditions, the colors and the uh, lights. So this will happen uh, from 16th to 18th of June, exactly, exactly in this uh, Peter and uh, Paul Tower region. Thank you. Any questions? You're welcome. Raise your hand again, please. If you have any other questions, please raise your hand now so that you get the mic. Hello, I live in St. Petersburg, close to the Sosnovka Park, and I'd like to thank you for lighting it. We can walk there in the evening without being afraid. I have two questions. Do you plan to shift uh, from From one year to um, perennial 
plants and uh, so we understand that we have quite a lot of them it's quite labor intensive and uh, so I believe that the use of of the use of um, annual plant is not very good. And uh, are you going to use uh, conifers as well in our gardens? We would like to see some greenery when there are no broad leaves. Thank you. We have partly answered your questions. So if you have seen the new embankment, so we have the conifers there, and the potato garden experts gave us this advice. As for the perennial, uh, plants we have this coming but uh, we discuss it uh, with the citizens some want uh, annual plants because um, that's the matter of uh, the short time uh, summer period and they want uh, bright uh, uh, blossoming and blooming and uh, you know the perennial plants uh, have uh, this um, blooming period uh, later on and uh, so we are still discussing it and um, frankly I want uh, I don't want to impose my will on anyone I believe that well, it's really the case it's coming and uh, now we are shifting to perennials and uh, this is important in terms uh, of uh, maintenance as well but we have a, a big challenge of uh, picking experts uh, who can uh, uh, do it properly so please ask uh, us for help please do as well I'll be glad to do this so maybe these guys are right, maybe the other guys are right. But we did this uh, with a, a pharmacist uh, garden. So, okay, I, I bought cabbage there and I uh, bought some other products there. I want them to grow it in this uh, city garden. So we are ready for this. But guys, please uh, come up to us. For instance, um, we are running a ranking uh, process for the 21st for 2021st, uh, so please participate. So we do participate. Yeah, great. So the next year we'll see your proposals. Good. Good afternoon. You have talked about the TV tower, which is uh, not uh, applied at, at night, but is a day, but is at uh, night. So uh, so it is in blue. So the temperature is 3,000 uh, kelvins and so on. Going back to Peter's words, that this uh, spectrum is uh, not good for sleep yeah, let's put it this way that's really bad so any contradiction there well one thing to mention what is good about this TV tower there are no any um, residential buildings there so there is kind of a safety radius around it but uh, I can see it uh, from my window and uh, I have a flat and I thought about my child I saw that the child was sitting there looking at this uh, TV tower I said what are you doing there and she said well mother I, you can look at fire and you can look at this uh, tower you know this feeling of the light moving this is something St. Petersburg is missing so many regions cannot understand this in Moscow we have a lot of sun uh, it's so great and nice when you go back to St. Petersburg yeah maybe it's not so sunny today we know, you know, all of that is, uh, well, comparative. Uh, in Petersburg we have the gloomy skies all the time. And so the graphic designs, I will think, by the way, about um, a proposal of doing something bright. You know, hopefully they will support me, the citizens will support me. Yeah, we'll run an experiment. Me and Gleb will invent something. Yeah, so we will do it. Propose your ideas just concretely please I want it I want this to come professionally I want it to uh, work well since uh, you know our citizens are very conservative and if things change they are very harsh on us and when we had this um, south road this uh, cultural heritage site I was really afraid of being beaten by the citizens uh, they said, well, you know that this is a legacy issue. And when this came, if you live in St. Petersburg, you know this. Uh, now we have quite a lot of people there, so this is uh, demanded. So the embankments are now given back to people and not to transportation. And this is really important to the city on the water. And this um, changes in terms of uh, functional renovation. So we had to remove uh, three restaurants so you understand it wasn't easy 
So the result is important, and there'll be the flower gardens there, no problem. Uh, that's my word. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the beautiful pictures. Uh, the, uh, okay, I take uh, I take no, no complaints. I, I take no thanks for this. Well, but you showed it anyway. Okay, the previous question is referred to what I'm talking about. The Karpovka River embankment. You said that the two-story buildings are uh, former barracks. And I believe that uh, in the evening, people didn't walk around, right? So have you measured after the renovation? Have uh, you seen any change in the footfall of people? I mean, is it a really a recreational area for the city? Thank you. This is a perfect question. I live nearby, and uh, I go there every morning uh, to my office at 7. When I go back, it's 11 o'clock p.m. So in the morning, they use uh, the swings, and uh, at night, they continue using the swings. And I don't know what the people are doing there, because the metro station is uh, far away. And but still, there is a big flow of people. In the past, it was a dead place, uh, a parking area for the speedboats. And the fence you saw there is the Naval Academy. They are all moving to Kronstadt. And in three to four years, uh, uh, this is going to be completed. We'll remove the fence and we'll renovate this. So this is uh, the Peter and uh, Pavlov site. That's uh, the heart and the origin of St. Petersburg and preserving uh, this um, history and uh, preserving the genius uh, loci is really important. And uh, I believe that architects can say that they have a good site if there are people there, if it is um, on demand. And now we can see them in the morning and in the evening. So, uh, you know, bicyclists uh, come there to see the lights uh, on this uh, bicycle and tracks. So these small things, uh, they're important. They show that we are on the right track. One more thing. When I wanted to have a ride there, I decided to use it. I uh, had uh, to stay in queue. Just imagine. Well, we're all kids and we want uh, to go uh, to the Sphinx. And, uh, you know, I didn't mention to do it in Moscow, to, to use the Sphinx here. I managed to do it in St. Petersburg, at least. One more question. I also live in St. Petersburg. And uh, I see the public space uh, has changed. And uh, we see more and more people. So people are going to the streets. And this is really important, because in the 1990s, people were hiding in their flats. But now we can see that people have a chance of going outside, outdoors, and kids and children. Uh, how many public spaces do you plan for 2020? I know that last year you opened 118. Yeah, last year it was 118. And this year, considering the Gazprom budget, we have to consider it. It's also for public spaces. I believe we'll have about 120. Uh, this is not subsidized. Let me highlight it again.